you ever watched someone do something and thought to yourself, I can do that? Well, it turns out there are quite a few things not all of us can do. If you've seen our other videos in this series, then you know certain skills and tricks can only be accomplished by a very small minority. We've got 10 more things that 99% of the people out there simply can't do. You know what we bet 99% of our viewers can do? Press the subscribe and notification buttons. Go ahead and do it. We'll wait. Don't be one of the 1% who can. Eyebrow lift. When it comes to communicating with other people, you have a number of tools at your disposal. You can change the tone of your voice, use hand gestures, or display all sorts of body language to help you get your point across. However, when communicating with people, one of the biggest cues comes from our face. Our facial expressions can say a lot about us. Like emojis, we can show people how we feel simply by adjusting our eyes and mouth. Then there are our eyebrows. Everybody can move their eyebrows. You raise them when you're surprised and you furrow them when you're upset. But can you move just one? Celebrities like Stephen Colbert and Dwayne Johnson have demonstrated the ability to near perfection. However, most people can't move just one eyebrow, at least without moving the other one significantly. Have no fear if you are in the majority. It turns out this ability isn't genetic. Yes, you can actually train your facial muscles to learn how to lift one eyebrow up dramatically. With enough practice, soon you'll be staring down your friends and family with that skeptical look in no time. Chair trick. Let's get specific here for just a minute. In the world of can and can't, we found a rather simple task that most men are totally incapable of doing. Women, on the other hand, can perform this task at ease. No, it doesn't involve putting the seat back down. Place one foot pointing at the wall with your toes touching the wall. Take your other foot and place it behind with your toes touching your heel. Then take the foot touching the wall and bring it back behind that foot. Now, three foot lengths from the wall, stand with your feet together and put a chair between you and the wall. Bend at the waist with your head leaning against the wall. Pick up the chair with your arms and straighten your back to an upright position. If you keep your legs straight and don't rock on your heels, then pretty much every guy that tries this will fail. Ladies, you should have no problem. So why can't the stronger men do this? It's simple. Men have a higher center of gravity and the weight of the chair throws everything off. Women, on the other hand, have a lower center of gravity, meaning that the chair doesn't influence their balance all that much. Oh, why, hey there, folks. Do you love watching our videos, but are you looking for a more ad-free browsing experience? Take your video viewing to the next level and sign up for the Premium Network. You'll get the first peek at the newest content from not only the richest, but Screen Rant, The Taco, The Sportster, The Things, and many more. Thousands of your favorite videos in one place is a no-brainer. Click here to be the first in line for the premium. Holding your breath. We were all little kids at one time. During this period, we often had temper tantrums and drove our parents crazy. Didn't get that toy you wanted? Not allowed to go outside and play? The way some of us chose to show our parents we meant business was to take a deep breath and hold it. Yeah, that'll show them. Clearly little kids aren't very smart. In fact, if you're a parent now and have met this challenge, you know that all that happens is that you get several seconds of peace and quiet before your little one gasps for air. All of this, of course, highlights that the vast majority of us can't hold our breath until we pass out. Our body's natural survival instincts are too strong and will overcome any attempt to go without air voluntarily. Sure, you can hold your breath so long that once you exhale, you get dizzy and fall over, but that's about it. So. What are the exceptions? Well, there are divers who have trained their bodies to go without air for long periods of time and some magicians and monks who can enter a meditative state where they go without breathing for long periods. Yet for the rest of us, after about 30 seconds, we have to gasp for a new breath. Multitasking. The human brain is a pretty incredible thing. It stores more information than the biggest hard drives, can solve complex problems, and can decode all the information that comes to it from our ears and eyes. Just like what your phone or computer is doing right now, your brain can handle all sorts of tasks in the background without you even thinking about it. These include things like balancing and breathing. That said, there are limits to this marvelous melon. For instance, with all of its power, most of us are still very limited when it comes to multitasking. No, we're not talking about balancing several projects at work. 
Instead, we mean literally doing more than two things at a time. Our brain has a part known as the medial prefrontal cortex. When we take on multiple tasks, this area can handle up to two tasks simultaneously. Throw in a third and things start to fall apart. For instance, you may be able to drive your car and talk on the phone at the same time, but throw anything else into that scenario, like, I don't know, reading a sign, adjusting the radio, or interpreting the traffic lights, and your brain can't cope and must give up one task to manage the new one. Talking while inhaling. Okay, so after hearing that title, you're likely breathing in and out and talking. Before you get too smug, however, what we are really referring to is inhaling through your nose and talking. So we bet you can't do that. At most, you'll pause and stutter as some letters and words come out of your mouth. In comparison, we all naturally exhale when we speak. That's how the vocal cords get their energy to make sound. Furthermore, you can speak while breathing in with your mouth. You just sound a little funny. However, that's pretty much where it ends. It all has to do with the way our vocal cords are set up inside us. Now, we here at The Richest aren't medical doctors, but we're pretty sure it has to do with airflow and pressure. These two things need to be just right to get the vocal cords moving enough to talk. Air coming in through the nose doesn't hit the vocal cords the same way. As a result, pretty much no one can speak when they inhale through their nose. There are possible exceptions, especially musicians who use circular breathing where they inhale through their nose while breathing out of their mouths. All right, it's time for our special ability quiz. All this talk of tricks and rare things people can do has us wondering, how many people have some form of hypermobility or double jointedness in at least one of their joints? Is it A, 1%, B, 5%, or C, 15%? Don't get too bent out of shape thinking about the answer. We'll tell you at the end of the video. Fist in mouth. You've likely been at a party or some gathering where one or more people decided it's a perfect opportunity to show off a very strange talent. Perhaps one of the more bizarre and seemingly pointless abilities involved trying to stick your whole fist into your mouth. For some reason, this is actually a thing, although we suggest not trying it. Even if you could somehow get your hand in there, there's no guarantee that thing is coming back out without some difficulty. No doubt some of you are trying this right now while you watch. Hey there. Just know that this is something very few people can actually do. Why you ask? Likely because you're not supposed to put your whole darn hand in your mouth. Yes, some famous celebs like Mia Kunis and Kristen Chenoweth have publicly demonstrated this feat, yet the rest of us mere mortals can fit, at most, half of our grubby little paws in there. Now that you've convinced yourself you can't do this, let's move on to the next topic. The Bird Dog If you're into yoga, then you know there are all sorts of moves used to stretch out your body and help with better balance. One such move is called the Bird Dog. This is a pretty standard exercise where you get on your knees and place your hands on the floor. Then you extend one arm and one leg, which are on opposite sides. Taking this move up a notch to a level where 99% of people can't go, we have the single-sided bird dog. In this exercise, you start on all fours but lift and extend an arm and leg on the same side. In order to even remotely come close to doing this, most of us will have to lean hard to the side or move our planted arm and leg inward to improve balance. So why can't most people perform this move properly? It all comes down to core stabilization, and the simple fact is 99% of us don't have the strength in this area to maintain balance. If you're like us, then the moment you raise your arm and leg, you teeter over or strain incredibly hard before crashing to the ground. Sneezing Eyes Everybody sneezes. Whether it's dust in the air, pollen, or even just bright light, we all endure that automatic response that sees our bodies forcefully eject air outwards. When you think of it, most people have the same general look on their faces when they sneeze. At first, it can be comical, but then turns into a squished up look before exploding with an achoo. Included in this is the fact that a person who sneezes closes their eyes. In fact, the vast majority of people do this when they sneeze. Myths have it that if you keep your eyeballs open when you sneezed, your eyeballs would either pop out or explode. Not so much. The eyes closing is actually part of a reflex action. The urge to sneeze arrives in the brain thanks to your nerves. This same nerve system then sends out the message for the sneeze to start. Included in this is a message to the eyes to close when the sneeze occurs. Most people don't fight this urge or reflex. 
However, should you try to keep your eyes open, people have proven time and time again that it can be done. You just need to really focus on it. Jack and Jill. Although this skill or ability is a bit different from the rest, we're still pretty sure 99% of people can't do it. You see, from the mid-1990s to the early 2000s, Adam Sandler was at the peak of his career. From Billy Madison to Mr. Deeds, people went to the theater and they laughed at pretty much everything. Even though Sandler played the same character in every movie, it still entertained everyone. Then in 2011, Jack and Jill came out. Moviegoers hated it and critics lambasted the production. This thing even got more Raspberry Awards than John Travolta's Battlefield Earth. Loaded with recycled gags, critics and fans alike labeled this as one of the worst movies ever, handing it a 3 out of 10 or less. That's saying a lot considering we've had to endure Gilly and Glitter. As a result of all of this, we're pretty sure one ability most people don't possess is the strength to sit through a full showing of Jack and Jill without at least walking out once or questioning your life choices. Play it safe, stick with the Sandler classics if you want to be left laughing, and not sarcastically. Ring Finger Paralysis In one of our previous videos, you may remember we mentioned hypermobility and the ability some people have to move their joints in strange ways. This includes the hands and fingers, where a few can bend, twist, and position their digits in rather unusual ways. Well, we have another hand trick for you that we're pretty sure will leave most people stumped. It's called the paralyzed finger. Bend your middle finger and place your hand on a flat surface with the center section of the middle finger down flat. Try moving your thumb. Now your index finger. Now your pinky. Easy, right? Now try and move your ring finger. We bet you can't do it. Don't feel too bad because 99% of people who try this can't do it and there's a simple explanation. The tendons in your fingers are independent from one another with the exception of your middle and ring fingers. With your middle finger folded and fixed in place, it limits the mobility of the tendon used to move your ring finger. The end result is that for most people, no matter how hard you try to concentrate, your ring finger just won't obey your commands. So, do you know how many people are said to have some form of hypermobility or double-jointed characteristics in at least one of their joints? Is it A, 1%, B, 5%, or C, 15%? The answer? B, 5%. That's right, around 1 in 20 people have at least one joint that bends beyond the normal range. These people also need to be careful because they are more susceptible to injuries and pain as a result. Okay, we're at the end of our video. Why not check out some of our other videos about strange abilities and people who can do crazy things? Just remember, we here at The Richest only provide these examples as informative entertainment. In fact, to show you understand that, go ahead and click on the subscribe button and we'll be sure to keep the videos flowing to your front door. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.